Good morning, everyone. And welcome to worship on this Joy Sunday. Whenever I wear this, I feel like a little <laughs> dancing. Um, so it is Joy Sunday, and um, of course, taken from Rejoice, and you'll hear that in our scriptures this morning. And it is in the tradition of actually both Lent and Advent, a lightning, a, a joy in our season of anticipation and waiting as we can see that Christmas is just around the corner. And that may induce panic in some, but <laughs> is meant to be, look up, your redemption is at hand. Um, and so we do this morning, take a moment in joy to anticipate the coming of Christ within all the time, but coming again. So we do that with joy. Um, the gallery, I believe this is the last show today, so if you haven't seen it uh, yet, do come and see this amazing, joyful show. Um, and I'm going to take this off so you can see my lips a little bit better. Um, on Monday, so tomorrow night, at 5 p.m., you may have seen in your leaflet um, an email, the candles, for climate change vigil that's happening at the MLA office. So that'll be happening across um, interfaith participation and all of that. Talk to Matt after the service if you want more information of that. 5 p.m. tomorrow. On Wednesday is our BCP Compline service led by Emmaus Folk. And actually, um, my two and Matt's oldest will be singing one of the introits at it. So if you've been wondering about checking it out, this is a good time. <laughs> um, on Friday is our carol sing. Uh, so do come 7 o'clock past the word. That also in this week of joy will be such a wonderful, wonderful way to prepare for Christmas. On Saturday, uh, there, thank you, thank you, thank you to our decorators. As you can see, the church becomes more and more festive as we approach Christmas. Um, on Saturday, again, Marilyn, is that right? At 10 o'clock, we'll be doing the tree this time? I don't know, maybe. Um, so Saturday, again, some decorating. Um, and I think those are all my announcements. Anything else from our community this morning? Yeah, Mary. You can also on Monday, if you can't go down to the vigil, mm -hmm. you can light a candle and put it in, put it in your window. That's right. We're asking people to, everywhere to do that. Yeah, that's right. If you didn't hear Mary, she said that in case you can't be at the MLA's office on Mondays, and this will continue, this won't be a one time only, but you can place a candle in your window to symbolize your solidarity in this action. Um, and so we'll continue to remind folk about that as we go along. Let us pause then with joy to prepare our hearts for worship. In this time and place, we gather on the land of the Lekwungen people, known today as the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. As quietly as winter steals upon us, the season of joy approaches. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our candle lighting. This is the path that Mary walked, to whom Gabriel said, you will give birth to a son and will call him Jesus. This is the path that John walked as he pointed to Jesus, the Messiah. First reading is from the book of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion, do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Canticle three, 
taken from the book of Isaiah. Please join in the bold print. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. A reading of the letter of Paul from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by praise and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Rise in body or in spirit as we prepare our hearts for the reading of the gospel. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, does, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with one that has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts, 
concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people, the gospel of Christ. our joy, our source, our song. Draw us in by the promise of your word and the presence of your spirit that we might know you. And we pray for the one who preaches, O God, you know his sins are many. May we see Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Sing and rejoice. Gaudete, people of God, sing, wake up. Today is, as Megan said, our day for joy, the third week of Advent with the pink candle and, yes, these very sparkly pink vestments denoting joy. And we hear that throughout our readings, but especially, and where I'd like to focus our time of reflection together on this reading, this first reading from the prophet Zephaniah. Zephaniah begins, like many of the Hebrew prophets, with a sober look at the reality of the world, of the people's lives, issuing a call to wake up with images of fiery judgment to boot. But that's not all, for the prophet continues, as Deborah Block writes, prophets say what not many want to hear, what not many want to believe. They hear God when everybody else has concluded God is silent. They see God when nobody else would guess that God is present. They dream God's dreams and hope God's hopes and announce a new future. And she continues, prophets sing God's song and sometimes interrupt the program with a change of tune. Imagine with me what it would be like to hear someone singing God's song, to have our own program interrupted with a change of tune that is, I suggest, what Advent is intended to do in our lives, and perhaps what this third Sunday of Advent in particular does to draw our gaze upward, to quicken our ears, to hear that song that has resounded through space and time, and to draw our voices into its chorus. God is among us. The call to rejoice is an admittedly odd phrase if you consider the book of Zephaniah as a whole. It's a very short little book written by one of the 12 prophets during the time of King Josiah, the time of great reform in Israel. The first two chapters are an intense judgment against the people. Zephaniah warns of a day of the Lord, which will soon come bringing judgment. And from that, calling everyone to repent. Echoes of which we may hear in John the Baptist this morning. In the middle of the second chapter, he explores how God's judgment isn't just over this one people, Israel, but in fact extends to the whole world. But the most severe words, to be sure, are saved for Jerusalem and the religious leaders of Israel 
who in Zephaniah's judgment have not listened nor heard the voice of God, but rather have led many astray. And hear with me that broken-hearted appeal of the prophet. The people of God who have been set apart as light to the nations have failed, have treated their own unjustly, have turned in many directions away from God. The priests whose sacred call to open wide the doors to God's mercy have instead lined their pockets with power and wealth and kept so many away from the arms of a loving God. Perhaps you too can long for that time when a cleansing, a renewing might come to lift up the lowly and the poor and those who hunger, to fill them with good things, to bring justice and healing for we who are sick and wholeness for we who are hurting. This is the heart of the prophet. Beneath it all is this longing that the world would be made right, a longing I suggest we can all enter into this Advent time. And that leads us into chapter 3. At that time, Zephaniah writes, I will change the speech of the people's to a pure speech, that all may call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. From beyond the river of Ethiopia, my scattered ones will bring an offering. You see, just as the judgment was for the whole world, so too is this new speech going to enable the whole world, if you like, to speak, to call on the name of the Lord, and in fact, to join their voices to this great resounding song a song ultimately of joy. God will purify our speech such that we might name God in our songs and in our prayers and in the words from the old prayer book, not just with our lips, but with our lives as well. And that healing, friends, is not just for us religious types, but in fact for the whole world from beyond all the edges of every river. And that sets the context for the words we heard. Sing aloud, daughter Zion, shout, Israel. Rejoice, exult with your whole heart, with your whole being. Sing and rejoice, for the joy has come. And as is often the case in the Hebrew language, this little phrase is a song. It's structured poetically, and attending to the structure opens us more deeply to what the authors might be driving at. You can read it through a common form that we get a lot in the Hebrew Bible, that of a chiasm a series of phrases that sort of intersect at a midpoint, that mirror or reflect each other, but move towards a, a common middle point. So I'm giving you an image. I hope you can see it here. And you can see it moves from A, B, C, D to E, which is the middle point, and then back down. It's never a pure repetition, but the phrases are mirroring each other. I hope the print's not too small. So C, sing and rejoice in A, sing aloud, rejoice, and then look at the bottom, he will rejoice over you. And consider that movement. We are exhorted to rejoice over what God will do, and then told that God, in fact, rejoices over us. And I suggest, friends, in that interplay is the very heart of the gospel. As John says, we loved because Christ first loved us, or Jesus says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Paul says we are saved, in fact, by the one-way love of God. And in that saving grace, which is God rejoicing over us, we are given a voice to sing, to rejoice. We join the song. You can watch it continue now. Uh, in B, we have battle imagery. Of course, God will turn away the enemies. And then again below, God will be the warrior who gives victory. And then in C, the King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst, and then below, the Lord, your God, is in your midst. Consider what this means for us in this time of Advent, of incarnation. God will be in the midst. This is the promise from a long, long time ago, a promise that we enter now. And then D, perhaps my favorite piece of this, do not fear disaster, and again, do not fear, O Zion. This is a stum stunning proclamation the King, the Lord, the God, the creator of all is in your midst, and because of this, we need not fear. As Jennifer Ayers notes, in these two texts, as in the broader lectionary text for today, the relationship between the season of Advent and the advent of God's kingdom becomes more clear. 
God's promises have about them a preference to protect and uplift the lowly, the suffering, the oppressed. Readers should not move too quickly to associate Zephaniah's words with the birth of Jesus or some eschatological future. But at the same time, Christian celebration of Jesus' birth as it nears, readers are challenged to remember the character of God's loving promise to protect and exalt the lowly. For this is one of the key ways we enter into this song, by living out God's good promises that the world would be put to rights. And that promise is made real for us in the incarnation, in the coming of God with us, in our midst, with us, Emmanuel. And we hear in this the echo of a chorus that God seems to be singing to us throughout Scripture, do not fear, do not fear, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Fear not, Mary. Be not afraid, I bring you good tidings. And indeed, the great chorus, the proclamation on which our faith depends at the other end of the story with Jesus, do not fear. He's not here. He has risen. But why not fear? Well, it points us right there because God's loving presence is in our midst. Why not fear? Because God rejoices over us. Why not fear? Because like Mary, God's loving presence animates, gives us life, helps us to be more fully ourselves as we express more fully the work of God in the world. And so we sing, we join our voice to this great song. Several commentators point out how this short reading is a hymn and it joins the great tradition of hymns sung by women throughout the Hebrew Bible. So it might join the ranks of Miriam, of Judith, of Hannah, of Deborah, of Ruth, of many others, over whom God rejoices and who in turn bring their rejoicing into song, sung back in joy. And just to come to a close and with Megan as my model from last week, I want to end by playing a short song for you. And let me say, as we sit together in this beautiful place, as we sit together hearing rumors of apparent church decline, the song Megan shared with you last week, she mentioned it was brand new off an album by a group called the Porter's Gate Worship Project. They're a collective of young artists, mostly under 40, seeking to revive Christian music within our contemporary context. They've written an album of lament songs, of justice songs. They've just put one out songs helping us respond to our climate crisis and now this brand new Advent album. And the song I play for you now is another group entirely called Ordinary Time. Again, under 40 musicians, writers who are finding fresh life in these ancient songs, adding their voices to those of old, pinning their hopes on the God whose day draws near, who is in our midst, who leads us out of freedom into fear, and who, against all of our expectations, rejoices over even us. And my friends, that is a good news and a joy that bubbles over and beckons us to join the song. So we'll listen to this song, which is based on these words from Zephaniah that we just heard read, and I invite you, join your voice to the song that resounds through space and time, for God is indeed with us. Amen. To hold the kingdoms to account Your righteous justice shall not fail All those who trust in your name
of our kings and Lord of our lords I sing out, sing out ye daughters of Zion and shout invite you to stand once more in body and spirit as we affirm our faith in the hero Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I invite you to sit, stand, or kneel, as is your custom, for our time of prayer. In this world with a multitude of very real fears and tears, let us remember God is in our midst, and for that we can rejoice always. Each petition ends with, God of our salvation, hear our prayer. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We pray for the church in this season of anticipation and preparation for the coming of our Lord. We pray for all Christian churches throughout the world. May this also be a time of reflection and thanksgiving. We remember especially in our diocese, Bishop Anna, the parish of Holy Trinity, North Saanich, with the Reverend Ian Powell. As well, we pray for the Diocese of Yukon with Bishop Leslie Wheeler Dame. In the worldwide Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada. Here in our parish, we remember with thanksgiving and joy, Megan, Matt, and Rob. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We pray for all communities of other faiths throughout the world. May they be able to worship in love and peace and without fear. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We pray for the homeless and hungry throughout the world and here in Victoria. I also add here we pray for those suffering from the tornadoes in so many of the states south of us. In this season of gift giving, may those who have two coats and full bellies hear the call from the prophet John. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from the ravages of war 
and conflict. On our hearts are the peoples of Afghanistan, Sudan, refugees at the Belarus border with Poland, Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine. Add silently or aloud other areas of the world on your hearts this morning. May the hope for Prince of Peace come to rule the hearts and minds of leaders throughout the world. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our province of BC severely challenged by devastating floods and fire. May all of us know of God's strengthening presence and may we continue to help rebuild together with gifts through charities as well as through our provincial taxes. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. We pray for creation. How often we have sung for joy with the many ways the gift of creation reveals our creator. But we have also been complicit in creation's destruction and thus our own eventual destruction. Let us give thanks for opened eyes and ears and that we need not be afraid. With God's strength and might, we can change our ways. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the growing good and strong relationships between Indigenous and settler Canadians. Again, we give thanks for opened eyes and ears and God's strength and might in forming new bonds. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. Within our own parish and loved ones known to us, we pray for Bo, Felix and Shannon, Jerry, Mary, Steve, John, Jeff and Sheila, Bob, Don and Betty, Darlene, those traveling, those known to us who are ill, and those who have died. We remember this morning Jane Kiffin. We give thanks for her life and witness. We also remember Tristan Rhodes, musician who served in our local wider church. Please remember any others on your hearts today. May they all and we know the peace of God which passes all understanding and with joy dry, draw water from the wells of salvation. God of our salvation, hear our prayer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in mercy and infinite in goodness. Let us turn to God's light and confess our sins. Holy God, in the advent of Jesus the Christ, your light has shined. We confess our unwillingness to see the light and to walk in your ways. We have not always opened our eyes to the needs of others or the earth, and our feet have wandered from the paths of justice and peace. Come, Lord Jesus, forgive and restore us. Come, Lord Jesus, guide and deliver us. Come, Lord Jesus, teach and renew us. Come, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, have mercy upon me. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise once more. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us acknowledge that peace in one another. Our offertory hymn this morning is When the King Shall Come Again. of hope. Renew in us the joy of your salvation and make us a living sacrifice to you for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your We should praise you, God of love, our source and our fulfillment. For you create all things, and in you we live and move and have our being. You made us in your image, and even though we turn from you, again and again you call us to yourself. And in every age, promise liberation. As a mother gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own to nurture them in the way of compassionate love. You sent Jesus among us, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of Mary. Jesus revealed your love for all creation 
and showed us the way of reconciliation. Having lived among us, Jesus suffered the cross, died, and in rising again, became the firstborn of the renewed family. And so we gather around your table with saints of every age and your beloved creation as we raise our voices and sing. God, because on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of our faith. Recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son. When all creation groans, unite us in Christ and give us your joy that we might be strengthened to do your work as your body in this world. Through Christ our Redeemer, in the power of the Spirit, all praise and glory be yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Merciful God, may this Eucharist free us from our sins, fill us with your unending joy, and prepare us for the birth of our Savior. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please rise once more with me. The joy and peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing with joy our closing hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.